The first cry of a newborn usually brings joy to parents who have been waiting for nine months. However, some modern lifestyle habits expose unborn babies to risks, some of which can even be fatal. The 2016 Uganda Demographic Health Survey shows that infant mortality rate stands at 43 babies per 1,000 live births. Child mortality is at 22 babies for every 1,000 live births and 64 under fives die per every 1,000 babies born in Uganda. <laughs> Today's focus is on neonatal and postnatal care. The demographic health survey indicates that 27 neonates and 16 postnatal deaths are registered per 1,000 births in Uganda. According to pediatrician and lecturer at Makerere University, Dr. Sabrina Chitaka, these figures are as a result of many factors including injuries, tetanus, birth asphyxia, trauma, prematurity, sepsis, congenital anomalies and acute respiratory infections among others. And the commonest focus of sepsis is their umbilical cord. Parents, especially in the rural areas, have been known to put all sorts of things on the, on the cord for cord care because they attach a lot of symbolism to, to the cord. So they may put from butter or ghee to cow dung, and all those things may have infections, microorganisms which can infect the baby. Dr. Chitaka says a child is vulnerable to catching infections during and after birth because of their weak immunity and highly sensitive skin. These children are prone to getting pneumonia they are very tiny, their lungs are still friable, and their immunity is not good. When babies are born preterm, they are prone to getting hypoglycemia, they are prone to getting hypoglycemia as low blood sugar, they are prone to getting infections, they can easily get um, seizures and then aspirate and die. So if we can control prematurity, a big number of those babies who die because of prematurity can really be reduced. The infections at this stage can be fatal in a short time or cause permanent damage to a child. A neonatal sepsis basically means that the infection has gone into their blood and the bacteria are multiplying really rapidly. And these bacteria could end up in the, organ, in the different organs like the lungs, the intestines, the brain. And there they would get things like meningitis if the infection is in the brain. They could get enteritis if the infection is in the, kid, in the intestines or they could get nephritis if the infection is in the kidneys and they can end up dying. A lot of people carry bacteria on their fingers. Um, the, the, the worst one is staph, staph aureus. And so if a person who has staph aureus comes and touches the baby's skin, they could end up giving this baby um, infection on the skin. According to the demographic health surveys, immunizable illnesses were in the past ranked as the biggest causes of newborn deaths. The government, through the Ministry of Health, introduced vaccines against the killer diseases. If you count all the children below five years, nearly 141,000 will have died by the time they reach five years. Dr. Chitaka says apart from infections, a child is likely to be affected by self-made threats, including poor feeding and insufficient care for the baby. If a, a mom doesn't breastfeed that baby, remember this baby is really tiny and their metabolism is also high. So they can easily drop their blood sugar levels and that can kill them. I, I also know that there's something called sudden infant court death syndrome. You put the baby in the court and then you come back and the baby is dead. A lot of times the reason those babies die is because of suffocation, because they have um, a lesion that was, wasn't detected during the time of um, delivery. She says once a newborn is exposed to diseases like meningitis, they are likely to suffer lifelong side effects including hearing loss, memory difficulty, brain damage, kidney failure, among others. Dr. Chitaka says first-time parents always require help in handling newborns 
but also urges them to seek regular medical care. She says parents need to learn their child and be able to communicate with them accurately. A baby who cries continuously and cannot be calmed down is also communicating that there is a problem. Obviously, if a baby becomes hot, is really hot, is, is getting a fever, then that is a sick baby. According to the Matano Perinatal and Child Death Strategic Plan of 2015, the government came up with some strategies to combat maternal, neonatal and postnatal deaths. These included strengthening capacity for delivery of quality mother-to-child health care services, like auditing of deaths, advocate for increased resources for maternal, perinatal and child death auditing, establishing monitoring and evaluation mechanism for perinatal, child and maternal death notification and auditing. Walter Moesije, NTV. Thank <laughs> you.